diseño, fabricación e instalación de tubos de presión. Se graduó con un eh, Bachelor of Science en Ingeniería Civil de la Universidad de Texas en Arlington en 2007 y recibió su MBA de la Universidad de Texas en Dallas en 2017. Él trabajó durante más de 10 años con una empresa un fabricante de tubos de presión de gran diámetro y tiene experiencia en varios materiales de tubos, incluyendo acero, hormigón, fibra de vidrio y hierro eh, ducte. El señor Nichols es actualmente director técnico de la Univell PVC Pipe Association, Association perdón, y también es ingeniero regional central apoyando al sector de servicios públicos, consultores y contratistas con el uso de tubería de PVC. Eh, este seminario se realizará en inglés. Cualquier pregunta la pueden formular, ya sea en inglés o en español, y el señor Nikos procederá a responderla en inglés. Si en algún caso se requiere una respuesta escrita, alguna pregunta, no los dejan, eh, por favor, estipulado en el chat para la respuesta posteriormente vía correo electrónico. Eh, sin más preámbulo, damos inicio. So, welcome, Mr. Nikos. Thank you so much for your help with this webinar. You can start when you want. Thank you very much. If I can... Uh, get control of the presentation screen so I can show my slides and I will get started right now. So thank you very much everybody for attending. Uh, as I was introduced, I'm the technical director for the PVC Pipe Association. We're the nonprofit trade association for gasketed PVC pipe in the U.S. and Canada. Um, and so today I'm going to be talking about the life cycle assessment that we did for PVC water and sewer piping. As an agenda of what I'll just be going over today, uh, I'll first start out just a general overview of sustainability. After that, we'll get into the actual uh, life cycle assessment report that was published in 2017. It kind of is broken up into two separate parts. There's the actual reporting of the life cycle data or the life cycle assessment data. And then the second part that I'll go over is some of the comparative analysis that was done between PVC pipe and other pipe materials. Uh, after that, I'll go over some of the other LCA information that's available out there, uh, and then I'll wrap up with summary and conclusions. So to begin with, what is a sustainable piping product? Well, it's something that has low initial and operating costs. It's very durable with the lifespan of hopefully at least 100 years. Uh, that's the current goal for piping materials in North America is uh, 100 years or more. Reduced pumping energy over the entire lifespan. Hopefully it's corrosion resistant or it has technologies uh, that are applied to it to help it prevent corrosion. Uh, it has low maintenance, so it's a very reliable product. Low embodied energy, and I'll get into what embodied energy actually means in a little bit. Uh, minimum waste during the manufacturing phase, reduced installation costs and impacts, reduced transportation costs, hopefully, uh, and hopefully at the end of its life, it is recyclable. And any sustainable product uh, needs to be transparent in its sustainability, so it needs to disclose the environmental impacts regarding uh, its product. So what is a life cycle assessment? Well, a life cycle assessment is also referred to as an LCA or life cycle analysis, eco balance or cradle to grave analysis. It's a technique to assess the environmental impacts associated with all stages of a product's life from the raw material extraction through processing, manufacturing, distribution, use, repair, and eventually disposal or recycling of the product. So they evaluate the entire lifespan of that product and uh, determine what its environmental impacts are for each phase of that product. So the purpose of the LCA is basically three parts to transparently report the findings uh, to the water, sanitary sewer, and storm drainage industries regarding PVC pipe, 
to ensure the long-term sustainability of water and sewer infrastructure. So we're trying to help promote that long-term sustainability of our buried infrastructure. And also to do a comparative review of those competing pipe products. That was the whole point of the 2017 report. Uh, now actually getting down into the report, you actually have to start back a few years before the uh, report came out in 2017. We first had to do an actual life cycle an assessment or an LCA. That was uh, started in 2014 by Sustainable Solutions Corporation, an organization out there that helps do uh, life cycle assessments for various building products. That uh, they uh, led an industry wide collection of environmental and sustainability data from all of our member companies. Uh, they consolidated all of that information and then uh, uh, prepared it in accordance with the ISO standards uh, for LCA reporting. So the ISO standard is ISO uh, 14040. And then that, uh, that life cycle assessment had to be peer reviewed and certified in order to meet the requirements of the ISO 14040 uh, standard. So they investigated each stage of the pipe uh, PVC pipe life cycle. Uh, they had to do some assumptions about life cycle period or how long the pipe material would actually last. So they used uh, the 100 year life cycle based on the information research that they did on the product. And then they also have to investigate the use phase characteristics and pipe performance data. So, um, all of that in life cycle assessment information and data was first published in what's called an environment product declaration and that was done in 2015. Uh, the environment product declaration or EPD is basically the public reporting of your LCA data. It promotes transparency to uh, the public for whatever it is that you're reporting on and it's basically like a food nutrition label for building products. So it tells you exactly what the impacts are uh, in terms of its embodied energy, also known as its cumulative energy demands. So how much energy does it actually need or use for each phase of its life cycle? And it also reports on various uh, environmental impact categories. And so for this uh, EPD, there is reporting on its global warming potential, its ozone depletion potential, acidification potential, eutrophication potential, and smog formation potential. So all of those were detailed very specifically for every phase of a PVC pipe product life cycle. Uh, the, then the EPD, EPDs that are developed based on the requirements of another ISO standard, which is uh, ISO 14025. And that EPD was again independently reviewed and certified. In this case, it was certified by NSF International. Uh, they reviewed and certified the EPD. So uh, the EPD typically lasts for five years. It's actually uh, up for renewal. We're in the process of renewing it uh, currently, so we anticipate on having a new EPD published either later this year or early next year. Um, so the, that EPD uh, had all of the environmental impact information, uh, but then the industry, the PVC pipe industry, wanted to go further and publish what's known as the life cycle assessment report. And so basically what that report does is it provides again all of the life cycle data as well as explanation of the background from where that data came from. Uh, so it does provide uh, the cradle to grave energy related impacts for the seven, for seven various PVC pipe products. 
It also does a comparison to publicly available information on competitive uh, products. And then it outlines the key findings on life cycle impacts. So it shows what the key findings are at each one of the phases, the raw material phase, uh, production, transportation, installation, and pipe use phase. It also does uh, go beyond the normal EPD reporting and also give information regarding health and water quality uh, as it relates to PVC life cycle. So the pipes that were looked at in the study, uh, the industry kind of looked at what are the most commonly utilized sizes and wall thicknesses and used those as a baseline to try and determine uh, what would have the most relevance for reporting purposes. So it was chosen to do both a smaller uh, size or smaller diameter and a larger diameter pipe for water uh, as well as sanitary sewer. And then uh, even though PVC pipe is not utilized very much for storm drainage applications, we did go ahead and provide that information uh, and do a, a, an analysis of a stormwater uh, pipe material as well. So these are the various sizes and wall thicknesses and what applications they were used for. We do reference what standards that we follow uh, AWWA or American Water Works Association for water piping and then ASTM for sanitary or storm sewer piping. This is the outline uh, from the ISO standards, the different uh, phases that you have to consider throughout the entire life cycle. Uh, it's broken up into four groups, the product stage, the construction process stage, the use stage, and the end of life stage. Some building products do not have anything to report for various uh, stages or substages, uh, but all of these need to be considered. That's why they're listed in these uh, specific orders and predefined uh, sections. So we're just going to walk through each one of these and the various stages. We'll start off with product stage, so that these would include stages A1, A2, and A3. So that would be raw material supply, transportation of those raw materials to the pipe manufacturing facility, as well as manufacturing of the pipe product itself. So, uh, the LCA starts out with raw materials and their extractions or uh, developments. So polyvinyl chloride resin is a thermoplastic polymer and it's comprised of vinyl chloride and which is produced from chlorine, which is uh, derived from salt and ethylene, which is derived from natural gas. So the LCA looks at uh, all the way back to the natural gas and salt extraction uh, from the ground and what is the environmental or sustainable impacts of that, as well as the creation of the vinyl chloride itself and the uh, creation of polyvinyl chloride resin. But the PVC resin is actually blended with other ingredients to make what's known as a PVC pipe compound. And those types of ingredients that are added include heat stabilizers, lubricants, modulus enhancers, pigments, and UV inhibitors. So all of those products, they go all the way back to uh, its base material components and the extraction of those components or the creation of those components to develop these ingredients. And then from there, the development of the PVC compound. So they take all of that, they consider what its environmental impacts are and then move on to uh, including the uh, environmental impacts of transporting those raw material ingredients to the pipe manufacturing facility. Once it's at the pipe manufacturing facility, the uh, life cycle assessment looks at all the steps required to manufacture PVC pipe. Uh, so taking raw materials from the truck or the trains that are used to deliver the pipe, uh, the ingredients to the manufacturing facility, uh, mixing up the compound and storing that, it, the actual extrusion of the PVC pipe, 
the cooling of the energy required for cooling the pipe down, the actual energy required for cutting the pipe, hydrostatic testing of the pipe, putting the pipe in the yard, uh, putting the pipe together in packages to be shipped, and the actual shipping of the pipe. All of those steps are looked at when they look at what type of energy is utilized, what, uh, how much water is actually utilized, what type of pollutants are actually used or uh, expelled during those processes. So they uh, consider the entire gamut of that pipe manufacturing phase. The next stage in the life cycle assessment is the construction process stage. And this comes into two parts. You have the actual transport of the pipe itself to the job site or the distribution warehouse. Um, and then the next stage is the construction of the pipe. So for transport, uh, PVC's main benefit is that it is a fairly light pipe material, so it does not require a large significant amount of energy to move it. Uh, but the LCA looks at what that average energy usage is uh, just based on uh, how far the uh, average manufacturing facility is shipping pipe away, uh, what, what that average distance away from the plant actually is, as well as looking at what all the packaging uh, or support of the pipe is while it's on the, the truck. So for the smaller diameter, uh, the smaller size pipe, uh, they're looking at how you bundle it up and stack it onto the truck. For the larger sizes, like the picture you see in the bottom there, they're actually looking at if it requires special uh, racks, uh, what is the energy required to get those racks back to the manufacturing facility and including that as well. For the actual installation, um, there's a lot of variables that go into how any pipe material is installed. PVC pipe can be installed via open cut where you simply dig a hole and put the pipe in the ground or it can be installed trenchlessly. Uh, there's various different methods out there uh, that go by different names. There's horizontal directional drilling, pipe bursting, micro tunneling and so on. So there's various methods where you don't actually dig a trench, you install it through the ground in some way, shape or form. Uh, for conservatism, the LCA considered only open cut installation. And that's because that one typically takes the most amount of energy to install. Also in North America, it's the primary method of installing pipelines uh, still today. Uh, the LCA uh, study actually did a sensitivity analysis of the installation methods and determined what the average amount of time it was to install a pipe. So how long were the machines actually operating before the pipe went into the ground? And so it looked at the various times and considered uh, what those times were and looked at what the baseline or the most commonly uh, performed time frame was, which was one and a half hours. So typically between the pipe being uh, unloaded off the truck to the time that it's in the ground, those, uh, those machines will be operating about one and a half hours. So looking at the entire amount of energy, the cumulative energy demand uh, from the very beginning through installation, known as cradle through installation, uh, this is basically a summarized graph of how much energy is utilized uh, for the PVC pipe uh, throughout that entire phase, cradle through installation. Uh, the unit of measure that, that was used throughout the entire LCA uh, process was 100 feet of pipe. So that's roughly 30 meters of pipe. Um, and that was done for simplicity. Uh, a, a unit of 100 is a fairly uh, simplistic unit to follow. 
Uh, but here, what you can see, that I've, I've shown the, the small diameter water pipe on the left, the small diameter sewer pipe on the right, and you can see how much energy is required during each phase. Um, by far the largest uh, energy demand throughout that cradle through installation phase is going to be your uh, feedstock energy, so the actual extraction of your salt or natural gas or other uh, raw materials, and then your raw material processing. So everything before the PVC compound gets into the plant. Uh, the actual transportation is a very small uh, part of that overall energy demand, as is pipe manufacturing. Installation, like I've already mentioned, can vary, but just looking at the average, uh, it does take up a fair amount of energy. And it is to be expected that the water pipe will be somewhat higher than the sewer pipe, and that's because the water pipe, PVC water pipe, is typically a thicker uh, wool than the PVC sewer pipe, so it does have more material with it. Uh, the LCA report also looked at the environmental impacts, and I listed those already. These are based off the EPA's uh, Tracy impacts uh, guidelines that they have. So from what you can take away at this, most of the smog acidification, eutrophication potential happens during the installation phase. So what that means is if your installers can find a way to uh, reduce that, you'll have more impact in overall sustainability. Uh, whereas your raw materials phase is the main contributor to ozone depletion and greenhouse gas emission. And so again, what you're able to do by looking at the, the composition percentage-wise over all the different phases, you can see where your biggest impactors are for uh, the various components or our environmental impacts and see the best way to reduce uh, those impacts through sustainable uh, improvements. Next, we're going to look at the use stage. So the use stage is broken up into a lot of different subsections. Uh, the main one, though, is the actual use of PVC pipe. Uh, the vast majority of the energy used during the lifespan of PVC pipe happens during operation of the pipeline. It requires a lot of energy to move water uh, throughout a system. Uh, also, though it lists maintenance, repair, replacement, refurbishment, those are highly variable um, factors, and it really depends on individual utilities and their experience with different pipe materials. Uh, so the LCA reporting did not get too much into that information because of the high level of variability. And then the last uh, couple of parts there are the operational energy use and water use as well. So like I mentioned, uh, the, the vast majority of energy that's used is during the pumping. Pumping determines the use phase power requirements for different pipe materials. The pipe does not actually use the pipe uh, power, but the pipe can cause the pump to use more power. Uh, the smaller the pipe diameter or pipe size, and the greater amount of friction inside that pipe, then the more pump power is needed. Uh, so that's very important to remember when we especially start going through the uh, material comparison part of the LCA report. The last stage that was looked at is the end of life stage. This is where you're looking at deconstruction, demolition, waste processing, and disposal. Uh, the real big key to understand uh, with PVC and all berry pipe is that when it's reached its end of life, it's rarely removed unless it's in the way. And the reason for that is it requires a significantly larger amount of energy to dig up, clean off, transport, reconstitute, and reuse that material than to use virgin or uh, uh, brand new material. And that's regardless of if it's PVC pipe or another pipe material. Uh, 
it, recycling pipe is rarely economical or effective from an energy standpoint. So uh, it is worth noting though that PVC pipe can be 100% recycled into pipe or other products at its end of life phase. So if it does end up being uh, dug up or replaced, uh, it certainly can be sent to PVC recyclers who can grind that back up to be utilized in other products or sent back to the manufacturer who can grind it up and reuse it in PVC pipe um, in the future. So that was kind of the first half of the LCA report. Uh, the second half took a look, uh, a holistic look at the comparative analysis of PVC pipe against other piping materials. Uh, so to, to do a proper comparison, we had to consider uh, different piping products. Uh, so we looked at, for uh, pressure pipe, we looked at two different uh, pressures or thicknesses uh, for small diameter and one for large diameter. And these are the comparable products that we looked at. So we looked at PVC, uh, ductile iron, and HDPE, which are uh, the three most commonly utilized small diameter pipe materials here in North America. For the large diameter, we looked at those three as well as a concrete um, a pressure pipe known as PCCP or pre-stressed concrete cylinder pipe. Um, the first thing we needed to look at or determine was what the design life was for the various piping materials. Uh, these were the design life years that we determined from the from uh, published reports out there. So we didn't just randomly select values that we thought would be preferential for one material versus another. They're based on actual reporting. Um, so in order to do that, we looked at these uh, literature uh, publications. There's uh, for ductile iron pipe, there's a National Research Council report that showed 50 years. University of Texas at Arlington report that showed 25 to 50 years and a Water Research Foundation report that showed as little as 11 to 14 years. Uh, so based on that, we went with the highest value we could find, which was 50 years. Similarly for HDPE, we looked at uh, various reports out there and they showed 50 years. For PCCP, it showed 50 to 75 years. So we utilized the 75 year value. And for PVC, it used uh, 100 years based on reporting that was done for PVC pipe. Uh, the, again, going back to the fact that uh, pumping ends up being uh, one of the largest impactors to overall energy usage, we first need to, to, to determine the hydraulic characteristics of the different piping materials. Uh, one of the easiest ways to do that was go to the various design manuals for the uh, pipe materials and see what recommended Hayes and Williams flow coefficients they had in their manuals. So for the plastic or thermoplastic materials such as PVC and HDPE, they're typically smoother uh, and so they have a better uh, flow coefficient, uh, typically 150 or 155. Your mortar lined or concrete lined products, uh, such as ductile iron or PCCP, uh, have a slightly lower one, and that value actually uh, is affected by the age of the product. And I'll actually show you uh, where we kind of determined that. We looked at uh, the different reports that were out there, and those reports consistently showed that uh, mortar lined materials. Uh, do have a decreasing flow factor over time. Um, so it was difficult to try to uh, determine what the average or, or value, uh, best value to use was. We tried to use something that was uh, more favorable to those uh, mortar lined or concrete lined materials. So we ended up utilizing something, uh, a degradation factor. Uh, a factor like what you see on the bottom row there, where is a linear decrease over time. Uh, so for actually calculating the uh, 
pumping energy required, we, we computed for that given 100 year uh, life cycle. And so we use the accurate internal diameter dimensions or internal size dimensions. We use the Hayes and Williams flow coefficients that, that I showed previously uh, with the appropriate deterioration rates. And so uh, doing so ends up getting the graph like what you see here on the right. Um, the, the jumps in, uh, in, in the graph actually show where you would need to replace the pipe, and it actually ends up improving the flow coefficients when you replace the pipe. Uh, we use 75% pump efficiency and 90% motor efficiency, and we assume some standard initial power costs and escalation over time. So any pipes that were uh, reckoned to be less than 100 years in, in lifespan, we included the, uh, the reset of those flow coefficients. So uh, based on all of that information, we first determined what the pumping energy would be. Uh, this would be for the 24 inch pipe, like what you see here. Uh, so again, it, you start off with, uh, with the, at zero years, those, but cumulatively building up over time, you see that the, the deterioration of the flow characteristics for the mortar and concrete lined products does start to affect them uh, much more as they age. So looking at the total pumping energy for 100 feet of pipe for the different flow rates and sizes, you can see that PVC pipe does have one of the lowest um, overall pumping energy demands for that 100-year uh, lifespan. Uh, just to give you an idea, we then converted that pumping energy into a pumping cost. So what would the equivalent dollars per 100 feet of pipe or dollars per 30 meters of pipe would that cost? And you can see there that HDPE is a product that requires a very thick wall in order to function, especially at higher pressures that can significantly affect its uh, hydraulic characteristics, reducing the inside uh, size of the pipe. And then ductile iron pipe as well, as that mortar lining degrades over time, it does increase the pumping cost over time. So this uh, next graph here just kind of compares PVC, HDPE, and ductile iron pipes for the uh, higher pressures and what's the total embodied energy or the cumulative energy demand for the cradle to gate. So all the way up until uh, uh, the final transportation installation. Uh, it, then it looks at final transportation installation. Then it looks at the use phase. And so what you see from there is that PVC pipe has approximately 60% less uh, total embodied energy than either HDPE or ductile iron for this eight inch higher pressure or higher flow uh, condition. For the eight inch, which uh, just as a conversion, eight inch is approximately 200 millimeters uh, in metric. Uh, but for that eight inch diameter, uh, for the lower flow or lower pressure condition, you can see that it's a little bit different energy. Uh, it's roughly 52% less than HDPE and roughly 65% less than the ductile iron pipe. Um, and then for the 24 inch, similarly, uh, you see uh, PVC pipe does have a lower uh, requirement, roughly 61% less for a than HDPE, 56% less for ductile iron, and roughly 17% less for PCCP. Now, uh, just to be fair, we did look at uh, those initial numbers included the energy required for replacement of the pipe, because again, we do look at the 100-year life. Uh, so those materials that were less than 100 years, we did have to consider initially uh, replacement of those materials and the extra uh, energy required for replacement of those materials. But to put uh, everybody on the same level, we looked at what would be the replacement for, uh, if we took out the replacement 
what would the total embodied energy for the various pipe materials look like. And they look like uh, these values, what you see here without the dashed line. Even so, you see that PVC pipe does have the lowest embodied energy over the 100 year life cycle. Uh, so here, looking at total pumping energy without replacement, uh, we again looked at various lifespans for the products just to compare and make sure that, that we are comparing things fairly. And you can see that the pumping energy for the large diameter uh, does vary quite a bit for the uh, different pipe material products. Now for the second half of the comparative analysis, we looked at the gravity sewer pipe and how that compared to the other sewer pipe materials that are available in the market. So we chose um, for small diameters, we chose a, a solid wall product, an eight inch solid wall product. There's also a uh, something known as a profile wall product. So it has a, a corrugated or a, a textured uh, shape. It's actually hollow in the middle, so it utilizes less uh, PVC material than solid wall pipe. Uh, it's typically only utilized for storm sewers, uh, but we did take a look at that. So we looked at an eight inch uh, solid wall for a sanitary sewer, an eight inch profile wall for storm sewer, and then a large diameter or large size. So we looked at 24 inch, profile wall for storm sewer and a 24 inch solid wall for a sanitary sewer. And again, we compared against the available pipe materials that are commonly utilized for those applications. So again, to start with, we have to look at where the flow factors, or in this case, the friction factors that are used for the PVC and the different pipe materials. In this case, for gravity flow, we're typically looking at Manning's coefficients. So the lower the value, the smoother the surface is. So PVC pipe does have that uh, lower factor with it. HDPE does not, uh, mainly because of the uh, interior bead that happens during the fusion process, it does affect their flow coefficient somewhat, and they're also a smaller diameter, which does affect their flow coefficient as well. Uh, and then ductile iron pipe is also listed there. NRCP is non-reinforced concrete pipe, and VCP is vitrified clay pipe, so clay pipe. Uh, those last two materials are utilized, not quite as much. Um, PVC pipe is by far the most commonly utilized sanitary sewer material in the US and Canada. Approximately 90 to 95% of the pipe that's put in the ground today is PVC pipe, but we did look at those other piping materials. So uh, these graphs here show if you took the eight inch pipe uh, all the various pipe materials and put them on the same slope, what would be the flow rate of the uh, uh, water going through those pipes? And so the higher the number, the better. And so in this case, PVC pipe does have the highest flow rate, which means it can handle the uh, best amount of flow for the various products that we looked at. Similarly, with the uh, solid, uh, the large diameter materials, looking at that flow rate, if you put all the pipe materials on the same slope or at the same angle, uh, what would their flow rates be? And the reason we look at it that way is because for sanitary sewer products, they're almost always uh, gravity fed, so they let gravity make the water flow. So they have to put all of those pipes on a slope or a, at an angle in order to flow properly. Looking at the profile wall, this would be again for the storm drainage applications. Uh, PVC pipe again does very well compared to the other pipe materials. Uh, we actually showed a, a, if you could go down one size for PVC pipe, uh, what would that flow rate look like? And so actually uh, 
uh, it's possible to use a slightly smaller diameter with PVC pipe than comparing to the other pipe materials that are out there for storm drainage. And again, we ran the same analysis for the total embodied energy for a large diameter solid wall sanitary sewer pipes. Um, interestingly here, we see the uh, vitrified clay and the NRCP or non-reinforced concrete pipe look like they have a slightly lower to a, a fair amount lower of um, overall embodied energy. However, for the vitrified clay, you have to understand that their anticipated life cycle uh, lifespan is not 100 years typically, uh, mainly due to breakage and, and uh, separation of the joints. And similarly for the NRCP, the non-reinforced um, concrete pipe, they actually have a much lower um, lifespan mainly due to the fact that in sanitary sewer applications uh, that that concrete will be corroded by these sewer gases there. Uh, for ductile iron pipe again they looked at uh, overall a hundred year lifespan with the replacement cost as well as removing the replacement cost to see how that works out. So PVC pipe does perform fairly well with the embodied energy for the large diameter uh, sanitary sewer. Similarly, for profile wall, you see um, uh, almost the exact same for PVC, polypropylene, and HDPE, but again, those products don't have the same uh, lifespan uh, as, as PVC pipe does. Um, so there's that. And then that's it for the actual report. The, the last section I'll get into is the other LCA or life cycle assessment information that can be available or we came across. Uh, first, I would recommend anybody interested in the subject uh, getting a copy of our life cycle assessment and actually taking a look at the references. We have over 200 references there. So we went kind of drug far and wide looking for the most uh, useful information regarding life cycle sustainability in regards to uh, pipes. And so a couple of the most interesting reports we came across, the first one here is the Hedi et al. Uh, it came out the University of Purdue where they looked at, they compared PVC, fiberglass, ductile iron, and concrete sewer pipes, and they used a 50-year life cycle for theirs. Uh, but what they looked at are uh, similar to the in, uh, impact categories that I listed earlier with global warming potential, ozone depletion, acidification, eutrophication, and so forth. They looked at that as well as some other ones. Um, and what they found is PVC pipe does have the lowest uh, overall impact in regards to the piping materials. Uh, the second study is uh, from Paratla, uh, Paratla et al., and there they looked at the CO2 emissions from the life cycle of uh, water piping, and they looked at uh, PVC, HDPE, and ductile iron pipe. Similarly, they, they found that PVC pipe has the longer 100-year lifespan, uh, but they looked at from from a 50-year life cycle, and they compared 8-inch, uh, that smaller diameter, and they found that PVC pipe uh, CO2 emissions were significantly less than both HDPE and ductile iron. A couple of good things to note in regards to uh, certification. So if you're looking to have pipe that's certified in some way, shape, or form, uh, we always caution people uh, green certification by third-party organizations frequently do not live up to their hype. Uh, so just because something is, is certified by some organization as being green doesn't necessarily mean that it's a truly green product. Uh, in the industry, in the sustainable in infrastructure industry that's commonly referred to as greenwashing, um, it, where you basically make something sound sustainable when it's actually not. Uh, often the LCA data from those products are incomplete or unavailable, nor have they followed any given standard. So they kind of make up their own standards and say that that's uh, good enough and, and 
therefore they have a certification for it. The really true way of doing that is to require uh, building products to follow an internationally recognized standard, such as an ISO standard. Uh, in North America, ductile iron and clay pipe uh, have what's known as a SMART certification. It's given by uh, an association out there. And that SMART certification is actually one of those situations where they do their own evaluation and determine that it's, uh, it's past their requirements. However, no environmental information about either of the products is disclosed and the comparisons are just not possible. Uh, so that no transparency means it's not known what's included, what's not, and it makes it very difficult to do apples to apples comparisons to compare directly between different pipe material products. So requiring building or infrastructure products to have published LCA information in accordance with the ISO standard is the primary way of establishing your baseline environmental information for standards. Uh, you should also be aware of evaluation software out there. Some of the software uh, is similar to those certifications. It has uh, points that you can give without actually uh, being able to verify whether or not those points are relevant or if those points actually correlate to the embodied energy or overall environmental impacts of the products. Manufacturing PVC pipe from virgin material actually uses less energy and has less global warming potential than manufacturing other materials from recycled products. So, for example, in our uh, we use the ductile iron here in North America advertises that it's 95 or 98 percent recycled materials, which is great uh, that they are utilizing recycled materials. However, um, they still use more energy uh, to make the pipe from those re recycled materials than PVC pipe does using new um, material. You should avoid software that penalizes PVC pipe because of incorrect environmental assumptions. A lot of times uh, the the assumptions in their regard single-use PVC or other types of PVC that's not building product related. And so those are kind of not exactly comparable uh, when looking at that because the single use is not a sustainable way of, uh, of manufacturing or utilizing that product. Uh, PVC pipe is, is what we commonly refer to as a durable product. You're gonna use it every day all day for a hundred plus years. So it, it should not be evaluated in the same light as uh, things that might be single use. The true measure of sustainability should include the embodied energy, the global warming potential, as well as greenhouse gas emissions, and should consider all phases of the life cycle of the product. So now we're gonna get into just what are the conclusions there. The LCA report uh, basically it was in three different parts, or, or it was in two different parts. The environmental data, which was specific to PVC pipe, it included the embodied energy as well as the greenhouse gas emissions and the other environmental impact categories. It offers a comparison of other piping materials, looking at the 100-year embodied energy comparison for both gravity and pressure pipe. It looked at the hydraulic comparisons and also the properties and de design lines for pipe materials. And it's also important to remember that the LCA report and that information and the findings there frequently correlate with the life cycle cost assessment findings. And that is simply put that the lower the life cycle energy, typically the lower the life cycle cost is. Uh, looking at the, the report itself, uh, the different phases, so for the manufacturing phase, PVC pipe uses the least amount of energy, including raw materials. During the installation phase, the key takeaway there is that PVC pipe is lightweight, and that lightweight means that you can use less energy during transportation and installation. 
Uh, during the use phase, PVC pipes low friction or better uh, flow coefficient leads to lower pumping energy and costs. And during the use phase, uh, corrosion is a major concern when evaluating the pipeline projects and products. So corrosion prone product pipes uh, deteriorate and corrode, uh, which increases their embodied energy. PVC pipe doesn't cor corrode, and therefore both the pressure and gravity uh, pumping and hydraulic capacity uh, is improved over other piping materials. Uh, as a pipe, as a part of a pipeline product, we always recommend that the su sustainability of the pipe material should be evaluated during the design phase. Uh, the LCA report should be used to evaluate the sustainability of PVC pipe. Uh, the report highlights the environmental benefits for using PVC pipe. The comparisons uh, are made with other pipe materials. PVC pipe does have that 100 year plus life and PVC pipe has the lower 100-year life cycle embodied energy. And so uh, with that, I'm at the end of my presentation. I thank you all for uh, attending, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you so much, Mr. Nichols, for the presentation. I think it was very interesting, and I think that gives us a, a lot of important information for our sector. Um, I have a question. Uh, you talk about um, a buried pipe after it use. You said that recycling it is uh, expensive. So how much contaminates the environment this pipe? And Will be a worse problem in a future lady barracks? Okay, uh, yes. So PVC pipe is a, what's called an inert material, meaning it does not react with the environment. Uh, it's utilized for that specific purpose. It does not react with its environment. So you could take that pipe and bury it in the ground and it will still be there 100, 200, 300 years later and it will not degrade. It does not uh, leach or uh, leak any toxic chemicals to its around surrounding environment. It is completely uh, inert, non-reactive with the surrounding environment. So therefore there is not any long-term toxic or uh, harmful or chemical concerns if uh, you leave the pipe in the ground. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. And uh, another question that I have is, is how many of these analyses or documents do you have in Univel? Uh, we've done just the one LCA report. Uh, we also, if you go onto our website, which is uh, uni-bell.org, um, you can uh, take a look at the LCA report in its entirety, as well as the EPD, uh, as well as a couple of other sustainability documents we have there, but we also have other uh, technical information available as well. So you can download all of those documents from our website and, and take a look at those. Okay, perfect, Mr. Nichols. We don't have uh, more questions. Uh, I think that maybe if uh, some of the participants uh, want to ask um, some things after, uh, I, we can we can uh, ask to you directly okay so thank you so much again yes thank you for having uh, me yes mr Nichols. Okay. okay thank you so much and have a nice, nice day all right thank you muchas gracias a todos los participantes y de pronto en algún momento después de la de la revisión de las memorias o después de la revisión del documento completo tienen alguna pregunta no duden en, en contactarnos escribirme por correo electrónico y se la haré llegar al señor Nichols muchas gracias a todos por su asistencia y que tengan un feliz día